Alrighty, so I came back into the Roma here to... Actually, I was doing some money grinding off some I guess, some items. You know, some money. So I wanted to be able to buy stuff, but... I ended up killing this guy off screen. It does not respawn after I kill him, but you get a few different six out of him. Let me, let me uh, check real quick. Well, it's not six. Um, it was some decoder. Maybe it was four. Yeah, it has to be four because that's where I'm going. So you get decoder four out of him, and I'm gonna go pick this item up real quick. Just wanted to do this on screen so that uh, you can see this. I wanted to, I wanted to change to a different character, but apparently I can't put anybody but Xion on the field map right now. Even though I have ZK Mobo in my party. And I pointed this out in a, in a previous episode when I was back doing Ziggy, but uh, I do remember this symbol here. Uh, it will be important later in the story. But I think that's the only place that you see that for quite a while. We're just gonna solid stake our way through here. This guy has no idea I'm right behind him. These guys are not very smart at all. Alright, then I'll, I'm just gonna walk up here and uh, pay my reward. Which would get a thief ring. Um, I don't remember what that does actually. Well, obviously there there's a uh, stealing in this game, but all right. So it looks like I de equipped everything. Rare item acquisition rate by ten percent. I guess this is uh, for both drops and. that I really need it on. Oh no, Chaos and Cosmos have whatever they, they had. Try a, a few things out. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use games just to fuck around and uh, do a few other different things. Now then, I, I gotta, I gotta show um, Momo and Ziggy around the Elsa. Yeah, we we know about it. So I'm actually going to talk, there There was a remake or a, a remake of uh, Xenosaga's episode 1 and 2 of my book, the stories for the Nintendo DS, and that's the uh, more canonically accurate story. Alright, let's see, this is the bridge. The frontmost part is the pilot console, and that's Tony's seat. The left front is the navigator seat, that's where Hammer sits. The right front is the engineer's control seat, the rear is the fire control seat. The seat attached to the arm protruding from the left rear area is the captain's seat. That's where Captain Matthews sits. I heard that all the controls can be automated for routine voyages. So we learned a, we learned a lot. Unfortunately, nobody seems to be up here right now. So, in, in that um, you know line of thought, I'm gonna just. Um, point out the differences and changes. Now, most of the, the changes between them, like, they, they do retcon a lot of stuff, is in the episode the episode 2 material. Uh, because they, um, Takahashi and Soria Saga turned in a completed script, but they, they kind of cut it down and butchered it uh, when they were making a second game. This is Cabin 1. It's the room the people of this ship use. 
Allied Commander Krakov also stayed here. It's a wonderful cab. Yes, it is. I hear the Yelso was originally a luxury space cruiser. That's why there is a high class feel to everything in both its exterior and interior. Even though it's a cargo passenger ship. Uh, what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll do all the, the retcons and everything. Now, they, they did change a, a few things for episode one. And most of it was just cutting areas. Uh, a few times, um, characters that don't uh, show up until episode two show up earlier in episode one material. Um, so, let's see, we got, um, in the combat simulator, you actually get to, to have a, a third party member uh, called Alex, he's a galleon. Uh, I'm not sure he's very useful, but he's there, just to fill it out, kind of like when you have Virgil during the Boglinde attack. Oh, and the pacing is also much faster. Uh, what other series reality in the prototype that? Never thought I'd meet one in a place like this. Looks like I've got the devil's own luck. Alright, so, yeah, there's a map. Yes, Trakov, we know that you're a double agent. Um, the eggs do exist inside of, uh, episode one. But, it looks like at least from my, what I'm seeing, I'm watching a, another playthrough and just like barely paying attention because I already know the score anyway. Uh, but, but you can't use them, but you know, it doesn't really matter because eggs are not that useful. And then the real mechs show up later anyway. Um, spoiler alert, they will show up in episode two. And that's probably the best part of uh, episode two is, is the uh, mech combat. All right, this is cabin two. They actually let me use this huge cabin by myself. You get to use it all by yourself, Xion? Yes. I think the captain was trying to be thoughtful because I'm a woman. The captain did that? But why? It's more fun to be with everyone. Yeah, that's true. To be honest, I was a little lonely, but starting today, you'll be with me, so I won't be so lonesome anymore. I hope we'll make you good roommates. Momo? Yes, I hope we'll be good roommates, too. I'm tired. Maybe we should call it a day. Uh, no, I have to show them around properly, fool. Staying up late is bad for my skin, too. Seems like a weird day for Shion to be concerned with. I'll get to, to talking about her in, in uh, just a bit. Okay, so the uh, Roma area is entirely cut, so you don't go through uh, Ziggy uh, rescuing Romo there. They just uh, show up on the the Elsa, and as for that, the enemies that show up on the Elsa are Gnosis, instead of the uh, Utic guys. This is the kitchen. Oh, it's Postpost. I'll help out too. There is no need for additional manpower to complete this task. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Hey, Postpost, that was rude. She was just trying to be nice. Analysis of the current situation says that I can manage without the help of others. There's no need to divert more personnel to this location. See, she's so not cute, and she's always like this. Dishwashing requires a rather fine adjustment of one's power output. Yeah, I'm just going to do this to get the dialogue. Um, I think the NPCs are actually more... I was about to say more better. I can't believe this. I'm actually getting all riled up being compared to a little munchkin like her. Hey, Momo, how about we have a little match next time? You talk to Alan. Chief, thanks goodness you're safe. If something were to happen to you, I'd... I you would just lay all over the 2D food there, right? Chief, please don't do anything rash like that again. Uh, no promises. I'll just uh, leave that to when I talk about Xion later. But you're going to give a tour of the ship, right? Hurry up and go then. Sheesh, first we've got a combat weapon and a bunch of weird scientists. 
Now we have a cyborg and a reality. Why are all these troublesome people flocking to me? Man, I don't need any more headaches. Great job. That's Cosmos for you. And Momo's amazing too. What a huge difference compared to our useless Tony here. Alright. More dialogue. Does the robot say anything new? Hello. Yeah, you're bartending. He even talks to the fish. You know what? That fish actually looks pretty good for a PS2 fish. Ah, uh, what what the hell do I have written there? Okay, so I'm just gonna skip that part because that'll be uh, more relevant later. Um, so there is. Since I did uh, mess up the um, audio for my recording, um, the, the YouTube subtitles are always hilarious. I, I, I find them funny, but in the one part of one episode, uh, they, instead of saying, like, Shion's boobs, they're like, um, uh, with Shion's boobs, she'll be fine, you know, talking about her breasts there. And that's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> like, you know, with, with moves like those, you're just going to be fine. But, uh, you know, that is kind of funny because you actually do get to... There, there is nudity in this game and you do get to see a Xion being later, so... <laughs> that is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, she'll, she'll just be totally fine with her moves, but uh, no, she's not a fine person at all. Uh, mentally quite messed up. Um, but, uh, yeah, why why do we want to play Xenosaur, though? I wonder if this is a vacant room. What do you think, Ziggy? How about we make this your room? Sure, that'll be fine. Then I'll ask the captain later. The ship has all sorts of supplies on board. It might even have a maintenance bed for cyborgs. Sorry for all the trouble. Thank you. Yeah, so... This is Ziggy's room now. We can come and talk to him later, here. And he'll have a maintenance bed. Actually, it uh, won't, be, won't be too long. This is Hangar 1, a hangar exclusively for eggs. They let me store mine here, too. It's a beautiful eggs. I've never seen an eggs like it before. It's one of our prototypes. It was supposed to be tested during Roblende's trial run, but I never imagined it would actually come into use. Whose eggs is that one over there? Oh, that's the Elsa's eggs. It seems Chaos pilots it for the most part. I heard that Hammer put it together himself from junk parts salvaged from battle. Really, Hammer is very skilled. I think he does all the repairs on the Elsa, too. Someone like Hammer is a rare find. There aren't too many people like that, even in Vector's second army division. I think the only other room... ...is, uh, Cosmos' maintenance lab over here that, that his dialogue. Oh, but, uh, yeah, um, let me, let me see if they get dialogue here first, though. This used to be a vacant room, but I'm borrowing it to use as a maintenance lab for Cosmos. Is that Cosmos maintenance bed? Yes, after being active for a set amount of time, she sleeps there and her data is uploaded to the company headquarters. I can also feed back the activity data to update the OS. So Cosmos sleeps too? Yes. Even if I disconnect her from the outside world, the central systems remain active. I wonder what kind of dreams she sees. Dreams, huh. It's probably something only Cosmos would know. I hope she has sweet dreams. So do I. Kind of, uh... Talking of, um... Isaac Asimov's... You know, what, what's the name of that? Do or do... Uh, robots dream of electric sheep or something? Something like that. But yeah, I was, uh, actually, when I was listening to the, the, the dialogue, they pronounce, um, Yuri Mizrahi's name as Yuri, so I got kind of curious about that, and I looked, uh, I went to the back to look it up, and uh, her name is spelled in Katakana as Yuri, and they actually do list her maiden name. Jeez, there's more dialogue? This is Hanger 2. Um, it got scratched up all over the place during that fight. Do you think it'll be okay? 
It's fine, don't worry. Hangers are usually built to be durable. Besides, I have a feeling that there's more to this place than what we see. What do you mean? Did you notice that the floor of the catapult deck is made of induction panels? This room is structurally next to it, right? It's built like some sort of an accelerator room, too. Accelerator room? Well, it'd be quickest if we asked the captain, but he probably won't tell us this it looks like black market parts perused. Uh, yeah, so... They, they do list, uh, Yuri's, uh, made it, or Yuri's made it name as, uh, Niwashiro, which is Japanese for garden, and Yuri is Japanese for lily, so... I think that her name is actually a mistranslation, because Yuli is the German word for July, and I don't think that's quite right, because... We also have a uh, quote from Soria Saga, who did most of the, the writing for uh, Ziggy's campaign. Ziggy's campaign, well, his backstory and stuff, which we'll get to eventually, but uh, she, she left this quote down there that, um, oh, I forgot all about these emails, too. Uh, she left this quote that um, the names chosen for two of the women for that uh, were associated with Ziggy come from uh, the Book of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1, and I'm using the uh, new international version of translation here uh, just so I could uh, make this reference because one, one year I was going to uh, summer camp and one of the guys there was a huge fan of Nine Inch Nails and he had a, a new international version uh, Bible and he just uh, one, at one point he said, hey, hand me the Nine Inch version <laughs> and everybody laughed at him. Uh, but yeah, it says, I am like a rose on the coast of Cher. I am like a lily in the valleys. And the other woman that's associated with Ziggy, her name is very on the nose with this uh, Bible verse. So I'm, I'm very strongly feeling that that, that really is a mistranslation and that her name is really Lily the So. But let's see, to whom it may concern, uh, Venture Lake announced their collaborative efforts with Vector Industries to win missions and appropriations from the blah blah blah. Oh, we're getting another one of these. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I got money back. Okay. Okay, so. Where are we on the um, email side quest? Okay, so this one's in the catapult room. So we'll go to that one next. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I strongly feel that, that her name is, uh, Lily is wrong. Um, especially with the whole garden thing in the, the Bible quote, so... I just thought it's, uh, very... Very keen on the idea of calling, uh, her Lily because that's July, and that makes, like, no sense with the Bible quote. That, it just doesn't fit at all. So... Uh, you know... What, what are your thoughts on that? Is she July or Lily? So we're going to go down here and maybe get another scene and get another email. I had to go to these places anyway. This is the catapult deck. This is where we took in the two of you early. You saved us with the four car. Thank you so much. Not at all. We have to help each other out in times of need. I'm really sorry about your ship, though. We had to throw it out because it was badly damaged. That's not a problem. It wasn't ours to begin with. <laughs> no, no, fuck. Oh, really? Yes, we borrowed it in order to escape. You don't borrow things if you're just gonna get rid of them. Like, that's called stealing. You're amazing. I can't believe you actually caught our small ship using that arm. I just happened to have some practice operating a crane on the previous ship I was on. That really helped out, but it was mostly luck. Hee <laughs> hee. It's gonna be like Yuki City Board and else with the hee hee hee. Tell us how you're not creepy. Uh, I think I have to go all the way down here to get this. Okay, so... Is this another investment? Okay, so what do we got? I'm not going to read all this stuff this time. ACM. It's going to have a whole, a whole bunch of tech babble. ACM Mercedes and Vector. So, what are the rewards? Or in uh, email 33. 
So if we invest in Ace Scheme, we'll get 4,000 gangstas. If we invest in Mercedes, we'll get 8,000 gangstas. If we invest in Vector, we'll get a decoder plug in. Alright, so we, we definitely want to invest in Vector because this decoder plug in is going to be essential to uh, the one side quest on the hacker. And it says also Ace Scheme and Vector investors get 10% off future purchases of Ace accessories. So we definitely don't want to invest in Mercedes because even though it gives us the most money, uh, we'll save more money by investing in AC or Vector, but uh, Vector is what I'm going to go with. Alright, that uh, clears out all the emails and should clear out all the dialogue as well. And I guess at this point uh, we'll just continue on. So I collected all the emails, I'm up to date. Okay. Oh no! Save the game! They were gonna give me the option to save anyway. Let's make it slower. Like, with each save I make, the save thing is slower and slower. It was very dark, and the wind howled horribly around her. She felt as if she were being rocked gently like a baby in a cradle. Huh. All's quiet after the storm. There's no trace of anything. Over. Lake of Darkness, where Nero does his fishing, looks something like this. You're quite the poet today, little master. Where do you come up with this stuff, huh? Read some books, Mary. It's good for you. Books are made from paper, little master. And they're such a pain to carry around. Paper and stone tablets last longer than optical data, you know. Besides, reading a book helps me get to sleep. How's the sensor readout? Anything showing up? Nothing at all. It's as if even the atoms are at rest. Not even gas or dust? If it was a giant flare, it should have at least left behind some high energy particles. How could that be? An entire planet was here, just a little while ago. Retrieving Little Master. Open cargo bay six. Opening cargo bay six. Opening cargo bay six. Let's go! Keep up the pace, everyone. We still got work to do. Welcome back, little master! Yo! Ariadne's completely vanished. But it doesn't seem like it was destroyed. It's almost as if someone is hiding it somewhere. Hiding it? Where would that be? Who knows? The best way to find out would be to ask the person who's hiding it. Shelly? It's very slight, but I'm getting a reaction from the primer. No question about it. 
Some kids playing with matches, maybe? What happened to that fleet, anyway? We haven't heard anything since we picked up that distress signal six hours ago. Gnosis, huh? Hmm. They must have been totally wiped out. Not necessarily. When the little ones play with fire, you know their folks can't be too far behind. Oh, I get it. So you reckon that the mom is gonna show up soon? Exactly. Change course. Proceed to the last known coordinates of the Federation fleet. It's inevitable. There will always be vermin. I'll leave their extermination to you. Very well. So, do you really think they will show up? Oh, they'll come. After all, that's the reason for their existence. It also happens to be Milcia's Achilles heel. I'll handle the negotiations with the military. I leave the rest to you. Commander? Cherenkov. What is it? The Zohar was... taken by the Gnosis. But... but I managed to secure the 100 series Realian. It's currently on board a cargo ship. Headed for the Milshan star system. I believe it is the same one you had secured on Priloma. What do you... Just stick to your duties. What? Don't do anything beyond the scope of your mission. We've already confirmed all the variables. The situation is proceeding according to plan. But, but, but sir... Return to headquarters at once. I'll deal with you then. Understood? Get the registration of the ship that signal came from. Track Cherenkov's marker. Yes, sir. You just love barking out those orders, don't you, Margulis? Show a little love to your dogs, or else they might bite you one day. You. The prototype belongs to me. I've grown bored with these Kirschwassers. So you're going? I think I'm more likely to succeed than your dogs. Ah, yes. Feed me your hostility. Pierce me with your hatred. <laughs> no, wait! Don't worry. I won't get in your way. We're working toward the same goal, right? <laughs> Is it wise to leave this matter to him? I'm not leaving anything to him. He has his uses, that's all. <laughs> 